Okay, Assalamualaikum and welcome back. So, uh, now we are going to talk about uh, another type of AC bridge, which is called a uh, sharing bridge. Okay, so this is another part uh, we talked about before, uh, the one we used to measure inductance, which is Maxwell and Hayes bridge. Now we're going to talk about another type, which is used to measure capacitance. And there are also actually many other types of bridge, but we're going to only sharing bridge for now. Okay, what is sharing bridge? So basically, sharing bridge circle basically is the modification of a Maxwell bridge. Okay, so if you look up here, this is a Maxwell bridge. Okay, and the only difference between Maxwell and sharing are here. Okay, if you look at this part of the circuit, okay, so R3 is now replaced with C3 okay, in the same branch. Okay, you still have C1 and R1. Uh, as uh, here, but C1 is now is a, is adjustable variable value. And another thing is basically you have a CX here, unknown capacitor, uh, instead of an unknown inductor. Okay. For the same value of resistor R2, it's R2 here, but now R2 here is adjustable. So in this in this case, you have two adjustable variable there, and the rest of the same, you have an AC voltage here, and you have a null detector here. Okay. So this bridge is basically used to measure a couple of things. You can measure uh, basically mainly to measure capacitance, uh, capacitance of the capacitor, and dissipation factor, as well as relative permittivity of insulation material. This is just another property of material that um, we're not going to talk a lot about this today, but uh, just want to know maybe an example on how to measure the capacitance. Eh? Okay, challenge bridge is very important of uh, uh, capacitance measuring bridge. Okay. So it's uh, also capable of measuring the electric loss of capacitor in addition to its capacitance value. All right. So we normally use this type of bridge for measuring capacitance at a very, very high voltage level. So uh, maybe some of those taking a power, a high voltage power system in uh, FKE, so they might have uh, learned this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the topology and the configuration. So the impedance, if you uh, write down all the impedance at each branch, Okay, it's as follows. So for Z1, for the impedance on uh, this branch one, it's basically the same thing as the Wheatstone uh, Maxwell bridge. So R1 parallel with ZC1, and if you write down the parallel value, it's like this. Okay, and in the end, you will have R1 divided by 1 plus J mega C1 multiplied by R1. Okay? And secondly, you have uh, uh, branch number two, or it's just by view, uh, real value of R2. And, and now you have the, the third branch is 1 over J omega C3 or it's minus J over omega C3 which is this one. So note that how I cut this negative because you know you can change 1 over J is equal to minus J or minus J equals 1 over J. Eh? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay. So and then lastly you have this branch here. Okay. This, the, the impedance the, the impedance one to find. The unknown impedance, which is called ZX, which is a series between resistor and a capacitor. Okay, it's RX plus one over J mega X. Or if you want to use this property here, it's RX minus minus J over mega CX. All right. Okay. So at balance condition for any AC bridge or DC bridge, I can talk about. There, uh, the condition is that there will be no any voltage difference across the detector of the bridge means that there will be no current across here and the voltage between these two points here will be equal or there's no voltage drop. So, the same thing we can say that the impedance, the, the, in the, the opposite impedance which is this impedance multiplied by this impedance Z1 multiplied by Zx is equal to this impedance Zc3 Z3 multiplied by Z2. Okay? And if you plug in all the uh, the expressions for all these impedances into this equation, you will have this equation here. Okay. So the thing is to solve this, you can you can cross over and multiply out and substitute here and there, but this will require a little bit lengthy calculation and you can make mistakes. Okay. So in this class also you have to, to know how to derive the, the final equation. Okay. So to simplify, let me introduce you what you call a, a, a method that we are going to introduce, which is just to convert the impedance of Z1, 
or you can convert maybe other things. Yes. Into what you call an emittance. Okay. So for those who are studying electrical, maybe they know about this emittance before, but for those maybe you are from mechanical engineering, so maybe I just want to, I will brief you in these few moments just now. So basically, admittance is simply the reciprocal of impedance. Okay, simply saying that if you if you know the impedance of a branch of any component, then you can find the admittance, which is denoted as letter Y, is just one over the impedance, or you can find the impedance if you know the admittance or vice versa. Okay. So um, okay, so you can see that in the previous circuit there are also series and parallel impedances, right? So emittance also they have some certain rules, which is different difference from from impedance. Okay, for example, in this case, if you have a two impedances in series, as two admitted emittance, eh, sorry, two emittance in series, then the series combination will result in a sum of emittance, and basically the emittance combine a series. The rule is if you have an emittance in series, you will combine them in the same fashion as resistor in parallel. Okay. Series emittance, you combine them in parallel, meaning that if you want to find the equivalent in emittance, then you have to use this parallel equation in 1 over y equivalent equals to 1 over uh, emittance of the first branch, second branch, and so on and so forth. Not the branch, okay. Alright, so and then you can find out the total Im impedance just 1 over the total emittance, eh? or the other way around. And sudden, uh, also, if you have, like, say, a parallel emittance, okay, emittance, you can convert basically between emittance and impedance. So let's say now you have a parallel, uh, several parallel emittance, like, like so, and uh, maybe y two one until uh, whatever the value is, okay. So emittance, if you want to combine them into an equivalent emittance in parallel, then you combine them in the same fashion as resistor in series, okay. So basically, it's the opposite. So let's say you have this all emittance in parallel, then the equivalent emittance is just you add all the value just like a list in series. Y1 plus Y2 and so on and so forth. Okay. So again, the same uh, you can find the Z impedance equivalent is one over the total uh, emittance. Okay. So let's go back to sharing bridge. So okay, this is gonna take a little bit uh, attention. I, I hope you can pay attention to this, a little bit you know, mathematic here. But I think it's not that bad. Okay, so you know that the, the the impedance for Z1 is R1 divided by 1 plus the omega C R1, right? We have seen that before. So let's convert that into admittance. Okay, so Y1 now become 1 over Z1. So 1 over Z1 is just the inverse. Lah. So R1 to be at the become the bottom. And this this equation, this these terms here will be will be at the top. Okay. So if you if you if you uh, you can split that into two terms, which is 1 over R1 and j omega c1 eh? this is real and imaginary okay so why we need to do that i will come back and we will we, we see that in a second okay so uh so with that so you you, you remember this initial equation so with all the impedance at balance condition okay so when you replace that z1 into y1 okay you plug is y1 here z1 into this equation here you will get this equation okay zx divided by one one equals to z2 multiplied by z3 and you can solve for z the impedance the unknown impedance equals the admittance for the branch one multiplied by z2 multiplied by z3 okay all right so let's let's go ahead and and if you move you want to move this equation to the this term to the right and to the left and equal that to zero because you want to separate between the real and the imaginary terms eh? like our the previous uh bridge derivation so uh, now we can plug in all the value okay zx y1 z2 and z3 into this term so basically zx is this one y1 is this term here z2 is this term here and z3 is this term here and equal that to zero okay very simple you got that okay very good so after that and then we expand that okay um we expand this equation so basically you multiply out so this negative as you can see, this uh, this is first zx. This negative and negative, it become positive, right? Negative and negative here. So I think this become positive, okay? And then you uh, expand this one into this one, okay? And then you you expand further, okay? And then we separate all the terms, which is basically um, um from here from here to here. Basically, you need to do some calculation. And remember. 
you, you have this multiplication, right? J multiplied by J, right? Remember, if you multiply J squared, is equal to minus 1. Okay, so some of the terms will become negative here. See, it's going to come from, from J when you multiply J squared. Eh? All right, so, and then you, uh, I color, I purposely uh, put a different font color, this Rx and R2 multiplied by C1, C3 is a real number because there's no expression of J in front of it. It's not multiplied by any j, and then the red uh, terms is all uh, the, the imaginary value. Okay, so after that, if we group the real and imaginary terms together, we will get that you know the green color font is rx minus r2 multiplied c1 divided by c3 equal to zero, and you can solve for rx equals r2 multiplied by c1 divided by c3, and that's the final formula, the derived formula that relate all the uh, the unknown resistance to the known parameter and then if you group the imaginary terms okay together I just bring all this together in equal to zero okay and then we can simplify that okay uh, into this you bring the other side and then you can cancel out this j right and then okay and then you can uh, simplify further simplify to do this and then you can finally calculate the unknown capacitance uh, from this expression is C3 divided by multiplied by R1 divided by R2 and that is your two equations Okay, so it's very simple, but it lead, uh, maybe some some mathematical uh, Manipulation here. Lah. Okay So in summary the balance equation revealed that these two formula can be used Okay, if you don't remember remember this formula you can try the derivation Okay, and then you calculate there's another term here where they call a dissipation factor for a series RC circuit is defined as the dissipation factor is omega the frequency multiplied by the unknown capacitor multiplied by the uh, unknown resistance okay let's take a look at some example here okay let's take a look at one example only yeah uh, so uh, an AC sharing bridge has the following constant it is given that C1 is uh, 0.5 microfarad around is 1 kilo no, K, Q is this kilo ohm here Resistance is two R two is two kilo ohm and so on and so forth. The frequency is one kilohertz. So find the unknown capacitor and resistance, which is what is C X and what is R X. So um, you can use the derivation, or you can use uh, simply directly the formula. Okay. So if you want to find, let's say uh, R X. Okay, R X is here. So it's basically C one multiplied by, by C three multiplied by R two. Okay. So you plug in the numbers and you get the value of Rx. And then for Cx is R1 divided by R2 multiplied by C3. Okay. And you will get uh, Cx around uh, 0.25 microfarad. So, and then the next one you want to find the dissipation factor. It's just simply omega multiplied by uh, capacity, the unknown capacity and resistance that you have calculated just now. Okay. And then you plug in the number and this is your... Uh, dissipation factor. What dissipation dispersion factor does is uh, I don't know. We don't need to discuss in this class. It's uh, just we know that one of the application of uh, this is uh, to find these three values. Lah. Okay, I think that's about it for uh, sharing this bridge. If you have any question, you can ask me in the YouTube and the you learn or come uh, give your question in the WhatsApp group. Okay, thank you very much. I see you again in the next topic. Have a good day. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum.